Well, it's raining this morning in Springfield, one of those steady downpours that looks like it's going to last all day. And out in the white frame house on Maple Street, the head of the Anderson family parts the curtains at the front window, surveys the weather, and then makes a pronouncement. Like this. Margaret. Yes, dear? This is a perfect day to stay home. Do a few things around the house. Maybe have a fire in the fireplace. Well, fine, dear. I thought I'd keep the children home from school today. Kathy's on the verge of a cold, and both Bud and Betty were coughing all last night. Yeah, it's a good idea to keep them home in weather like this. And it'll be kind of pleasant, having a rainy day at home with all the family. Hey, Mom, can I have Joe come over? His mom's keeping him out of school today. Bud, you're staying in bed, remember? There's nothing to do up there. Well, rest. That's what you're supposed to do. Can I have something to eat? You had your breakfast. Get a book and read or something. Look at that rain come down. Oh, I'm just going to stretch out in this chair. Might catch up on some reading myself. Mother! What is it, Betty? Bob's jumping on his bed. <laughs> Bud? Pete's sake, who's at the door? I'll go. Here's the mail, Mrs. Anderson. Oh, thank you. Who was it? Oh, that was our nice mailman. Oh. Anything besides bills? Hmm. Letter from me. Looks like Cousin Millie's handwriting. Nothing for me? No. No, this is all. Who is at the door? Just the mailman. Why are you staying home, Father? Oh, just thought it'd be a good day to stay home. How do you feel? I feel fine. Mother, I think I'll rearrange my closet today. Uh, all right. Father, do you think you could find another clothes pole for my closet? The one that's in there is sagging. It's practically fractured. Well, there's no point in getting another pole in there. You just have too many clothes, that's all. But that's the worst part of it. I haven't a thing to wear. Mm, we'll discuss it later. You go up and start cleaning out. I have one dress, maybe, or two at the most that I'd be seen in. Uh, this is a very interesting letter from Cousin Millie. Oh? How are things going in that branch of the family? The relatives still fighting? Dear, do you remember hearing of Uncle Dudley? Well, there used to be a lot of jokes about a character called Uncle Dudley. I don't recall that we ever had a relative by that name. Why? Well, it seems we do have an Uncle Dudley. Who says so? Cousin Millie. Hmm? I can't figure out from her letter what branch of the family he comes from, but... Apparently, he's quite well off. Well, he can't be in our family. <laughs> she says he is. Cousin Clara wrote to Millie that Uncle Dudley had appeared at her house. From what I gather, he's making the rounds of all of his relatives. Well, that sounds more like someone on our family tree. <laughs> if there's one thing they do well, it's drop in for visits. Sounds like he's rather eccentric. Well, he's part of our family, all right. <laughs> Millie says he's trying to decide who to leave his money to. Oh? Tell me more about this fine old gentleman. <laughs> oh, he must be quite a character. Came to Clara's house with no advance notice whatsoever. Didn't say who he was or anything. He just appeared. By the time they found out who he was, it seems they'd done something to displease him, and he left again. Hmm. Uncle Dudley wonder if he's the old duffer Aunt Sylvia mentioned when she was here, the one who struck oil down in Texas? Search me. I'm sure I've never seen him. Millie, in her letter here, says she thinks the reason he's looking over his relatives is that he had a very unhappy childhood. Had a father who made his life miserable. I don't get it. It's not too clear to me, either. Well, we certainly had some odd people among our relatives. I wonder if he's on your side of the family or mine. Well, it couldn't be on my side. <laughs> Honey, uh, where's the last issue of the National Geographic? Isn't it there with the magazine? Oh, yeah. Here we are. Oh, uh, this is the kind of a day to read about faraway places. Wonderful article here on the life of the blue whale. Well, while you chase the blue whale, I'll chase the breakfast dishes. Oh. Uh, need some help? No, thanks, dear. Uh, Uncle Dudley. <laughs> Cousin Millie must have dreamed all that. Tracking the blue whale in iceberg land. Dad, is it okay if I come down here with you? Didn't Mother say you were supposed to be lying down? 
I'll lie down on the floor. <laughs> All right, but uh, keep yourself warm. Hey, here's an ad in the classified section. 70-foot schooner for sale or trade. How about that, Dad? How about what? A 70-foot schooner. We could get it and sail around the world. Oh, sure. Do it some Saturday. <laughs> no kidding. It says for sale or trade. We wouldn't have to buy it. We could trade him something for it. Oh, but don't get started on one of those crazy ideas again. Well, we could. We could trade him our house for it. We wouldn't need the house if we were sailing around the world. We are not trading this house for a schooner. How about an island? But I'm trying to read. There's a guy here who has a whole island. Where? In the Pacific Ocean. Well, good. Now we know exactly where it is. It says, we'll trade for real estate or good used car. No. We could trade him our car. It's used. <laughs> Probably wouldn't need the car on the island anyway. But stop reading those ads. And don't scatter the paper all over the floor. Somebody has to pick that up, you know. Father, look at this pile of junk. Now, these are my clothes. Just look, there isn't a single solitary thing here that I can wear. Uh, Betty, I don't think this is quite the time to discuss clothes with your father. You haven't got a chance to, Lou. I'll tell you that right now. But pick up the papers. I am, I am. Now, Princess, if you take that pile of dresses for which I am sure I spent a small fortune not more than a week ago, back to your closet... Dresses? I'll... Look, there's nothing here. Nothing. Nothing? What's that green thing there? That's a dress. That? I wouldn't wear it to a pig fight. <laughs> well, I'm not going to buy you any dresses today, so you may as well take the whole bunch back upstairs and hang them in your closet. Do as your father says, Betty. I can't hang them in my closet. The clothes pole's broken and father won't fix it. I didn't say I wouldn't fix it. Well, it isn't fixed. Look, everybody, please. I sat down here hoping to spend a few minutes just quietly reading. Come on, Betty. Bud, you find something to do in your room. I'll fix the clothes pole in Betty's closet. Can I use your tools, Dad? Nothing doing. I'm not going to have you sawing up my closet. Daddy, come quick. Oh, no. What now? There's a poor old cat on top of the garage, and he can't get down. Well, let him stay there. He can get down if he wants. I'll be careful with the tools, Dad. There's a pole in the garage. You can't go out to the garage in this rain. The poor cat's out in the rain. He's getting all wet. Daddy! I don't know why I can't have anything to wear. Other girls have nice things. You have more clothes than any girl in town. All right, all right, all right. Let's break it up. Everybody scatter. Children, go, 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 go. I can't even talk to I'm father. I'm not going to hurt the tool. Poor old cat out there, wet and cold. <laughs> well, finally. What's come over the children, anyway? It's nothing, dear. I stay home from the office one day and they descend on me like a pack of lions. Do this, do that, give me this, give me that. Well, it's a rainy day, dear. They're at loose ends. I think I'll sit down for a minute. Hand me that garden magazine, will you, dear? Mm hmm. Thanks. Uh... Where did the uh, children go? I don't know. To their rooms, I guess. Why? Nothing, I just wondered. <laughs> Do you think we should put in some new rose bushes along the drive this spring? Just because it's a rainy day and I happen to be at home, there's no reason to get completely out of hand. <laughs> you know, some morning glories might look nice by the side porch. They have to learn to have some consideration for other people. This would be a good time to order if we're going to put them in. I wasn't being unreasonable, was I? I'm always willing to talk to the children Dear, I was asking you about the flowers Margaret, you weren't listening to me <laughs> Well, what were you saying? <clears throat> Nothing I was just wondering if... Betty! Betty! Yes, Father? Uh, did you call me? No, I didn't Oh, well, I won't bother you. You go ahead with your reading. Where are you going? In the dining room. I have some mending to do. Honey, you don't have to leave. I... Oh, me. Bud? Bud? Yes, sir? You didn't have to leave the room. 
Just because I'm reading in here, you you don't have to leave. Thanks. Uh, don't you want to sit down? Read or something? No. I'll find something to do upstairs. Well, you don't have to, bud. You can stay down here. No, that's okay. <laughs> Kathy. Where are you, kitten? In the den. What are you doing? Nothing. Just watching the poor old cat. <laughs> well, why don't you come in here? I'd rather stay in here. Darn kids. <laughs> The blue whales of iceberg land. Ah. Margaret? In the dining room, dear. Mind if I come in? No, of course not. What's the matter? Honey, uh, did it seem to you that I was a little rough on the children? Not necessarily. You wanted to read and they were interrupting you. Honey, I, I'm afraid that without realizing it, I, I've let myself become a... a Bad-tempered monster. <laughs> You're one of the nicest monsters I ever met. Remember what Cousin Millie said in her letter about Uncle Dudley, the reason he's such a strange, eccentric old guy? He hated his father. I don't want that to happen to our children. No, we certainly don't want them striking oil in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a strange thing. The realization hit me just a minute ago. Sitting in there, I... I suddenly felt so alone. Dear, it's just a rainy day, that's all. Rainy day, nothing. By George, from now on, I'm going to take an entirely different attitude toward the kids. I've said my last unkind word. After all, what are we here for but to give the children a start in life? Give them love and understanding. Yes, dear. Childhood is such a few short years. Why shouldn't we make them happy years? No reason at all. Well, starting right now, I'm going to lean over backwards to be the kind of a father the children want me to be. Fine, dear. You lean backwards. But just be careful you don't tip over. Well, a rainy day in Springfield has produced at least one rather interesting development in the Anderson household. <laughs> we always thought Jim Anderson was a pretty good father all the way around. But this morning, Jim himself concluded that he'd been anything but a good father. Now, a conclusion like this can be a frightening thing and can also produce some startling results. Witness what is taking place in the white frame house right now. Bud? Betty? Kathy? What do you want, Dad? Where are you, Father? In the den. Come on in, all of you. What have we done now, Daddy? <laughs> Nothing at all, kitten. I just want to talk to you. What is it, Father? Uh, sit down, Princess. We're going to have a little talk. What is this? A little meeting, bud. First of all, I want to apologize to you kids for the way I spoke to you a while ago. You didn't say anything. Well, that's very nice of you, bud. I don't know what you're talking about, Father. Me neither. Well, I'm sure you do know, and you're trying to spare my feelings. The point is, kids, I realize that for some time now, I, I've been pretty hard to get along with. I, I've been a very unsympathetic father. What's unsympathetic? <laughs> get lost. Is that what it means? Have you been lost, Daddy? <laughs> be quiet, shrimp. Now, Princess, let's all try to be kind. Kathy didn't understand, so we'll explain to her. What I meant, kitten, is that Daddy is going to try harder to be gentle and understanding and helpful to you and Bud and Betty. I think I've fallen into the bad habit of saying no much more often than yes, and without thinking. What are you leading up to, Father? Well, just this, Princess. From now on, I want all three of you to come to me with any problem you may have. Nothing is more important to me than helping you. So, let's just say we're starting a new chapter that I'm going to try to be a better father from now on. Why, that's very sweet of you, Father. Yeah, I'll say. Now, what would you like me to do? How can I help you? I've got a problem, Daddy. All right, kitten, what is it? We'll have it straightened out in a minute. Will you get that poor old cat off the garage? <laughs> the, uh, 
uh, Cat? Dad, I got an idea. Let's not buy a boat. Let's build one. Well, we can certainly think about that, bud. After he gets the cat, I was first. You could certainly help me, Father. There's a lot of clothes in one of the trunks, and I thought first that if I... First, he's going to help me start the boat. First, he's going to help me with the cat. Now, wait, easy, kids. I'll have to take one at a time. I'll get around to all of you, but Kathy was first. Now, uh, about this cat, uh, don't you think he... He's sitting on top of the garage, and he can't get down, and he's wet. Daddy, you've got to hurry. Well, all right. We'll get Mr. Cat off the garage. I'll put on my raincoat, and we'll have him down in no time. I'll put on my raincoat and help you, Daddy. Me too. Uh, uh, give me mine, will you, Dan? I'll be upstairs when you finish, Father. All right, Princess. Uh, uh. There. Come on, kids. What's this? You going out in the rain? This is Operation Cat Rescue. Daddy's helping us with everything. But why? He said he was lost. <laughs> I'm being what a father should be. Should have done this long ago. Come on, Kathy, bud. That poor old cat's getting wet out there. Be careful of that cat, Jim. He's not friendly. He will be. We have a new policy around here. To make a friend, you've got to be a friend. Boy, it's raining cats mm. and dogs. That cat didn't come down with the rain. A dog chased him up there. <laughs> uh, get the ladder from beside the garage, bud, and uh, set it up. You think it's going to read? Sure. Come on, kitty, kitty. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. I don't think he knows you, Daddy. <laughs> He's giving me kind of a dirty look. <laughs> Here's the ladder, Dad. Oh, all right. Now, uh, you steady it while I go up. Uh, here, kitty. Nice, kitty, 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 kitty. Look out, Dad. He's coming at you. Hey, <laughs> Look that. He's down, Daddy. Ran right in the garage. You scared him, Daddy. I scared him. <laughs> he ran right over me. Well, at least he's down and safe in the garage. Ooh, let's get in the house. Look at him, Daddy. He's climbed up on top of the car. Oh, get off that car, you silly cat. Big old muddy feet all over the top. Don't talk like that right to his face. <laughs> We've got to get him off the car, bud. You uh, go around the other side and I'll show him from here. Go on, cat. Scat. <laughs> you scared him, Daddy. Now he's up in the rafters. Get him down, Daddy. He'll catch cold up there. He's all right up there. Don't leave him, Daddy. Get him down, please. All right, all right. Uh... Move that box over here, bud. I'll stand up on the workbench. Maybe I can climb from there up on that pile of trunk. Hey, Dad, the garage here would be a good place to build our boat. Bud, don't talk about boats now. Brace this pile of trunk so it doesn't fall over. Uh, anybody out here? What? Jim Anderson? Who's there? I can't see you. You're against the light. Uh, building inspector. Well, I can't come down right now. I'm trying to catch a cat. Oh, go right ahead. Daddy's helping me. The cat's name is Cookie. He was on top of the garage and he got wet. So I see. Father, are you in here? Yes, Princess. The cat's up here in the rafters, trying to get him down for Kathy. Oh, excuse me. I didn't see you. Uh, building inspector. Oh. I think I can reach him if these trunks will hold. Come on, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Kitty, 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 kitty. Uh, I'll be with you in a minute, mister. Oh, take your time. We could put the bow of the boat right in here, Dad. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Father, kitty, while you're up there, could you get down that big trunk? Yes, Princess, as soon as I get this cat down. Come on, kitty. Don't back away. I'm next after Kathy. Dad's going to help me plan the boat, aren't you, Dad? Yes, bud, we'll plan the boat. Uh, mister, will you push that plank up here so I can reach a little higher? Oh, Sure. Sorry to keep you waiting, but I promise to help the youngsters. Take your time. As soon as we get the cat down, we're going to give him a bath, aren't we, Daddy? Uh, uh, we'll see. Come here, kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Come on. Daddy, do you like the name Cookie for a cat? Yes, that's a good name. Come here, kitty, 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 kitty. Cookie. How about the name Windjammer? For the cat? No, for a boat. <laughs> How about 15 feet? 
That ought to be long enough, don't you think, Dad? Yes, I think so. Uh, get hold of my foot and give me a boost there, will you, mister? Oh, sure. Up you go. Yeah. Ouch! Ooh, splitters. You better be careful, Mr. Anderson. That rafter looks shaky. Here, kitty, kitty. Come here, cat. Jim, you're wanted on the telephone. I'll be there in a minute, honey. Uh, see if you can shoo the cat this way. He keeps backing up. They didn't say who it was, just wanted to talk to you. Oh, I beg your pardon. A building inspector. Flat or round bottom? Oh. <laughs> He's uh, talking to you, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> you see if you can get a broom or something and move him this way. He keeps backing up. Flat or round bottom, Dad? Uh, round, I guess, bud. It sounded like Mr. Jeffers on the phone. He's waiting, dear. All right, Margaret. Uh, could you just reach over and open the trunk, Father? Well, I don't think I can right now, Princess. I'm holding on here by the skin of my teeth. Call the cat, somebody. Maybe she'll move. Another inch and I'll get hold of her tail. It isn't her. It's a hen cat. Well, I beg his pardon. <laughs> Should I tell him to wait, dear? Who, the cat? <laughs> Mr. Jeffers. Oh, I'll, I'll be there in a minute, honey. Oh, uh, could I help you with something? Nope, just the building inspector. Your husband's a busy man. Yes. <gasps> oh, oh, look out, Jim. Out, out. <laughs> Grab it, cat. Are you hurt? Pull the trunk off of oh, him. Oh, that was a bad fall. Daddy, are you alive? <laughs> yes, I think so. Father, you shouldn't have been up there. You should have watched it, Dad. The cat came down, too. He might have been hurt. <laughs> I think he came out of it all right. Are you all right, Father? Yes, a few scratches, but nothing broken. You were lucky. You certainly were. Well, at least we got the trunk down. Help me open it, bud. Hey, look at the job. Oh, boy, good stuff. Well, I suppose there's no point in your trying to answer the phone now. They probably hung up. I'll call Jeffers back. And now, uh, Mr. Building Inspector, what can I do for you? Well, after what I've just seen here, I think everything is quite acceptable. <laughs> well, I don't understand that. The rafter of the garage broke. I should think from a building inspector's point of view No, that... no, no, everything's fine. Here's your slip of approval. Well, thank you. And uh, may I say, Mr. Anderson, you have my most sincere admiration. Good day. Good day. He was a strange fellow. <laughs> Appeared from nowhere. What does it say on the slip of approval? Well, listen to this. On this rainy day in Springfield, I have at long last found a man of great patience and deep love for his children. My search has ended. You will all be remembered most generously in my will, for you truly deserve it. Signed affectionately, your Uncle Dudley. <laughs> Well, the rain clouds have cleared and the stars shine bright tonight over Springfield. Been quite a day around the Anderson household, but the quiet of late evening now has settled over the white frame house. Uncle Dudley. Imagine him appearing as a building inspector. Oh, I almost wish we hadn't mentioned it to the children. They're already thinking about oil wells. Oh, they'll forget it. That was really the least important thing that happened today. Well, I'm not sure about that. I probably carried the patience thing a little too far, chasing that darn cat and all. But it's so true, honey. We do have to check up on ourselves once in a while to be sure we're giving the children the understanding they need. It's something we shouldn't forget. I wonder if we'll ever see Uncle Dudley again. I wonder. You know, from now on, every time the doorbell rings, we'll sort of expect to see him back again. Mysterious man. Well? I'll go, dear. Uh, 
Oh? Uh, just a moment. Who is it, honey? It's a little girl from down the street. She wants to know if you'll help her. Her cat's on top of the garage. <laughs> 